part of the Earglue Media family of podcast. You're listening to the Cantina Cast. Your home for thought-provoking Star Wars talk. Join Adler and Jonesy in breaking down the latest news, trailers, movies, and of course, your favorite characters from a galaxy far, far away. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Cantina Cast. My name is Albert Padilla, and this is episode 301, The Sin. So we were kind of tossing back and forth a couple different ideas about what we were going to do this week, and we landed on covering The Mandalorian, because why not? I mean, heck, there was so much that happened, and uh, felt like it was just, it it was newsworthy. So we're going to definitely do that. We've got a whole lot of other news that we need to get into as well, but I'd like to welcome our newest member to the show, uh, please welcome Mike Rondo back, or back to the show. I should say, sorry, about yeah, that. M- yeah. Mike. Uh, I, this this is National Lampoon's. Uh, yeah, this is my Groundhog Day. This really is. It's Groundhog yeah. Day. So I think I'm I've died, and this is what's happened. I've come back, and uh, I had to to be a co-host. I guess I I don't know what's going on, but but anyway, I know Jonesy's coming back. I I just know he's on sabbatical, and I believe his last known location was yeah, Disneyland. Disneyland. Yeah, but Batu, I, I guess, you know. Batu, we'll, we'll, right. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, Batu, so. yes. Exactly. So, but yeah, I got two things on my mind right now, Albert, before we get into all this stuff. Okay. Number one, I feel bad for Mando Monday because chapter three, The Sin, when I did my little breakdown yeah. uh, uh, yesterday, I feel like I was a little off my game. So I apologize for being off on chapter three, The Sin, because it was such a good episode and I was so flat. So I apologize for that. The other thing, Albert, is... Should I drop a deposit on a cyber truck? I don't know. I feel like I should do that. I don't know well, why. That's not, that's not in our news. We're not talking oh, about that. Yeah, but yeah, but I, you know, everyone who knows me knows I love Jeeps and I like four wheel drive and all that other stuff, you know. So I figured we'd throw it off at the beginning of the uh, episode. I know Joe and I in Discord are going back and forth. It's an ugly vehicle. Don't get me wrong, but I like ugly vehicles. So I don't know. Well, man, we'll that see. is right up your alley because I don't know yeah. that there's a vehicle uglier than that. Maybe uh, the, the Gremlin? Mm-hmm. Oh, the Gremlins, classic, man. Those lines, no. those classic bubble lines. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. You know. But anyway, um, yeah, we a should couple probably station get wagons from the 70s, too, probably yeah, well, right up yeah, there but, as well. Well, I don't know. They had paneling. Those were pretty cool. That's you know, pretty the paneling nice, yeah. on the side. So, you know. Hey, but, anyway. but that's not why you're here. Um, no, that is definitely not why you're here. <laughs> but please let us know if I should get a, a Tesla Cybertruck. Anyway, moving on. So moving on. But, you know, well, this is going to be your opportunity to kind of make up for, you know, being flat on that show because... We are going to pull back the curtain and really get into a lot of detail here with uh, Chapter 3. The new boy so, band, Ben? Is that what we're going to talk about? The well, boy let's band? start there. Let's start there. Oh. Let's start with the news. So we had a uh, the Rise <laughs> of Skywalker TV spot that launched, and we had some uh, a lot of new – well, I shouldn't say a lot, but there were some significant pictures, I thought, that they just kind of snuck in here. And I have to – so the skeptic in me or the cynic in me wonders if – given all the hype and the attention that the Mandalorian has been getting, whether or not they felt like, you know what, let's just go ahead and – throw some really juicy nuggets into these this, you know, 20 second spot to get people talking and excited again about the rise of Skywalker. So it's kind of cool. It almost it almost feels to me like and this is only in my head, I guess it feels like there's maybe this internal competition between who can generate the most hype between the Mandalorian and the rise of Skywalker. But nonetheless, you've already mentioned that you've already uh, broken the seal <laughs> here. We got our first look at uh, the Knights of Ren. And I, I don't understand the pose. I mean, cinematically, this looks cool. We've got the camera moving from left to right. Um, this is a uh, early 2000s boy band uh, <laughs> music video look uh, pan shot around them. Exactly. As they, they're contemplating life and everything with the girl that broke up with the lead singer there. So, yeah, I don't Tell know. Me I don't why. know what, yeah, exactly. You wanted me to sing that, but I'm not. Um, Ain't nothing I, I mean, but it, it's an interesting look. Like we get, that's probably our best look that we've ever got of them. Like on film at least. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, this is just a bad shot by JJ and so, I don't even know if this will be in the movie. I well, think that's this what I was going to ask you. Do you yeah. think the shots in the movie? Cause if it is like, why are, unless they're like strategically positioned themselves to like be able to kind of see all around them. And there's a reason why I don't see why they would just naturally be at the top of what looks to be some kind of a, a ledge or a cliff or whatever this is here. Um, and, and just kind of looking around, right? I mean, they're all kind of looking down in, in different directions. They've got their weapons drawn. They look like, you know, on guard. 
yeah. just weird. I don't know. It doesn't seem like this, this is maybe going to be in the movie and just maybe a promotional still or shot that they've done. Yeah, I think it was maybe more or less like J.J. was flying in the helicopter and they were up there. Like they were testing something like, yeah, we'll just throw it in the because a lot of the stuff that they throw in these spots, I feel like aren't even going to be in the movie. Um, I've always said that they film stuff just specifically for the, the trailers and the TV spots and stuff. And yeah. I think you're kind of right with the whole hype thing. I think they're just capitalizing on the hype with uh, with the Mandalorian and this helps uh, them. It doesn't hurt. So I, I think right. they're kind of. Just going with it. Um, I don't know that that one guy, the lead singer. I'm going to call him the lead singer with the cleaver. There, <laughs> you can almost make out his face in that shot. Like you can see, see his nose and maybe his mouth, so to speak. Like from the, the, first, uh, the guy right there, smack dab in the middle. Yeah, yeah, cleaver guy. Yeah, 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 cleaver yeah. Guy. the lead mm-hmm. singer of the of the Knights of Ren, um, which is technically supposed to be Kylo, but you know. This guy, I think, just stepped anymore. up and took. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, yeah, with that cleaver, pff, who's going to argue with him, right? Right. Um. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. What are your thoughts on their appearance? I mean, not so much the gimmicky, you know, 2000 boy band music video shot. I mean, yeah, no, I think I'm they excited. look pretty cool. I, yeah. think, I do too. I, do, I think they look great. Um, And I'm looking forward to, we'll, we'll get our first look at them in the comic book, right? So we'll see that. I think it's mm-hmm. the, it launches the week before uh, the movie comes out. So we'll get our first yeah. look at there. Uh, but I'm actually pretty excited about seeing them in the movie. So yeah, they look, they look fine. Apart from this yeah. shot. Yeah. Um, we got a great look at some, finally the Sith Troopers. I think we've been questioning where the heck are they because they've been talking about them. It's like one of the very first things that we got, uh, when the rise of Skywalker was uh, announced and we started getting some promotional pictures and stuff like that. And we really hadn't seen them since. And in Empire Magazine, they've got this, uh, this picture of them look like they're, um, looks like they're marching in. I don't, I don't think you have it on here also, but there was another spot that came out this week that showed uh, one of them firing a blaster. I don't, did you catch that one as well? Uh, I didn't see that one. The only closest action one I got is where Finn and Janina, I believe her name is, uh, are fighting them on the Star Destroyer, it, it looks like, the yeah. picture below the one I got here. Um, the, the shot with the Empire reminds me of the one where we first see Finn on the transport in The Force Awakens. Yeah, a very, little bit. very not, similar. Yeah, just More not red. quite obvious. Yeah, obviously, yes. <laughs> um, but here's the thing. I'm still confused with the Sith Troopers and how they fit in. And they were in hiding with the Emperor, I guess. I don't know what's going on. And then we get the Knights of Ren. So who's with what? And I don't know. It seems like it's, I don't know. I'm I'm a little confused by all this. I mean, it's cool. Don't get me wrong. I, I like yeah. them better than the, the White Troopers. But I just, I don't know. I'm a little confused by all this, but what, what do, what do you the think? Name I, mean, that, I yeah. think the name more than anything has got me the most intrigued. Like, why are they called Sith Troopers, right? What makes mm. them Sith, apart from the red? And I think Jonesy and I, early on when this was first announced, we talked about it. But I just question whether, I think there's got to be more there than, I would hope that there's more there than just the name Sith. And that somehow yeah. there's a, you know, some kind of logical reasoning behind uh, why they've call, been called it. Maybe it's the weapons they use. Maybe it's the training that they've got. Right. I don't know what possibly it could be, but my hope is that there's something uh, a little bit more there uh, tangible in that word Sith trooper and not just a red trooper. Right. I um, hope they like show up in like resistance or something to give us something. Um, oh, you, you know what like I mean? That. Because, yeah. Yeah. Because cause here's the thing with like resistance with you got uh, what Pyra and, and all that, like the different colored like uh, Phasma you thought she was special. Mm-hmm. So I'm confused on who's special and who's not in in the forces, so to speak. I I don't know. I mean, obviously when we get the the book there, the dictionary there for the for the rise of Skywalker, it'll it'll probably clue us in a lot more, uh, which is something we always like to check out and break down anyway. So yeah, yeah. Uh, the other the other interesting shot on here, or at least in that um, little promo that we've got or a little teaser TV spot that we had, is this. Uh, we got the dudes right in the. Um, I don't know what it is. Crotch rocket, the uh, the motorcycle, <laughs> the sand that, rocket. <laughs> the sand what, what rocket. I don't know what we're calling this thing. Uh, Desert but, buggy. Uh, I mean, sure. it's no cyber truck. I'll say that. I mean, maybe not. Uh, but it's fairly, might, fairly close. You might be able to do this with the cyber truck. I don't know. So, so we'll is see. this intentional? Here's the, the question I've got. Is so if you haven't seen the trailer, uh, the little TV spot. At one point, this vehicle kind of um, lurches up from behind, uh, almost at like a forty five degree angle, and one of the troopers on the back seems to either jump off or maybe he's kicked off. I don't know, but he ignit he ignites his uh, little jet pack or jump pack, whatever they're going to call it in this movie uh, and flies over. And so we've seen, we've seen this particular stormtrooper flying from one of the other trailers, or maybe it was the BTS f- or footage or something. We've seen him flying around, but nonetheless, uh, I guess two questions is one, 
did you catch whether or not this was intentional that this happened or was it, it looked something like that, it to me? Yeah, it looked exactly. Like it to me. Yeah. So yeah, is that how they have to launch this guy? I think um, to get a certain height, maybe it's just like an advantage that, all right, we can do this move and it's just like a special move they do. But, you know, they could launch stationary. This just gives them that boost, I guess you could say, uh, and probably saves them a little bit of fuel. But yeah. I don't know. The, the whole thing is kind of goofy to me, to be honest. But, you know, we'll see how it works and plays out in, in the movie. I, yeah. I just find it. I don't know. I, it's not so much the jet trooper there, right? That's what they call him, the, the jet trooper there. Um, uh, jump it, trooper, it's the, I think, is what they're. Yeah, the jump trooper. It's the it's the vehicle itself. I mean, now it has a purpose in a way, right? Because now we kind of have an understanding that oh, this is what they use it for. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just odd. doesn't it have like really one really long wheel in the front, kind of like the Fred the Fred Flintstone vehicle. Yeah, it looks like it's got a wheel, and then there's nothing in the back, so it looks like the wheel. I don't know, I don't know because again. We get the repulsors, right? So how does this, what is this really, I mean, again, you get the stand crawls that crawl, so. Yeah, you know. not everything uses this stuff, right? I mean. Yeah, and even the tanks in Rogue control. One had tracks as tracks. well, so, yeah. you know. Yeah, there's probably some, some benefit there. Who knows? But I'm sure we'll get another TV spot next week, the week after, and, you know, so on and so forth, and we'll piece together more stuff, but. Well, it was cool. I, I enjoyed the the TV spots, and I'm sure, yeah, like you said, we're going to get more of these, and there'll probably be more reveals, if you will. To be honest, that we you know seen. what? At this point, it's the last one. Why not start showing some of that juicy stuff? Just in some way to entice us even more. I mean, I know people are interested in it, but I'm I'm more. I think a lot of fans are more interested in the Mandalorian these days than than the Rise of Skywalker. I mean, I'm still interested in it, but I mean, give us some more teases. I guess that would make us say, oh. Oh, I definitely gotta, I gotta go. You know what I mean? So I, I don't yeah. know. At this point, it's the last one. It's the last of the Skywalker saga. I, I, it, we'll go for it at this point. Sell me on it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, everybody's excited about the Mandalorian right now and, and that's going to continue, I'm sure. But, you know, it's just, it'll, the rise of Skywalker, I guarantee you a week before uh, yeah. we're going to be all, it's all we're talking about. Yeah. All right. Well, enough of that. Let's talk about Colin Trevorrow because he um, had a moment here not to, I guess it was, was it last week? Yeah, it was sometime last week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was a whole, a lot of things were going on last week. Now, just to keep in mind, we didn't get all the news that's out there. We got some of the stuff that at least caught our eye or anything, but, yeah, but continue, right, right. sir. Well, yeah. And this is him going back and talking about, um, you know, after leaving the, after he was his, parted ways with Disney, he, uh, he mentions in, and I forget where this was at. I don't know if it was, uh, uh, an article or something. I don't remember. Do you remember the source on this one where they interviewed him? Uh, I, I want to say it's entertainment tonight, but I, I could be completely wrong. So uh, this one, I whatever. forgot to get the source for, but uh, that's it's fine. No, no, not our but source. He, I can tell you that. Yeah. yeah, no, no, it's not our source, not sauce. It's not our source. Um, sauce. I could go for sauce, but anyway, go ahead. <laughs> I'm just giving you a hard time on your accent, but, um, I, well, that's, that's fine. I'm used to it by now. I mean, I've only done 700 shows these days, so, you know, I get all tongue tied, but continue. Yeah. But uh, so Colin Trevorrow came out and he basically the, the good, I guess the key takeaway from the story is that originally in his storyline, he did not have the emperor as part of episode nine. And um, mm -hmm. I made the joke in discord, I guess, the other day that maybe this is maybe this is the reason why he was let go um, before we came <laughs> on the air. I made the joke that he probably just said, oh, yeah, sure, I'll put the emperor in there, got his uh, big fat check, signed his name on it and then said, oh, sure, I'm going to just kind of get that guy out of there because I really don't want him in there. But, um, yeah. but yeah, I mean, if there was intentions of having him in there and he did not want to, I can see where that would be a big point of contention because that's kind of a big thing, right? Bringing back the emperor or not bringing back the emperor, I think kind of changes your overall narrative in the story. Uh, would you agree? Oh yeah, I do. I, uh, it's interesting. So do you believe though, him? Do you... Um, yeah, I do believe him. I, I don't see any reason why he would lie about that. I don't, I don't think, uh, I mean, the ones that I'm I'm curious about is Kathleen and, and JJ saying he was part of the plan from the start. But, you know, I, I don't think Colin is really going to. No, nah, I, I believe him here. Yeah. Uh, it's funny that he didn't even consider him. I mean, I don't think anybody was really. Yeah, that includes you, JJ and Kathleen. I, I don't think you did include him until, you know, Snoke died. And then you're like, oh, well, let's come up with a new guy. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think it's cool that, you know, the, the one thing that I'll take from him uh, is what he says. He's grateful for JJ embracing some of our ideas. It's exciting that fans will get to see moments that felt essential to all of us. So, 
that I thought that was pretty nice. And I think that's pretty genuine as well. Cause I think Colin had some pretty good ideas that we might never know about. Um, yeah, you know, I know they got the ship that's down in galaxy's edge. That was one of his ideas. So they use that. So, you know, and like all things with, uh, Lucasfilm, they always recycle things. They don't get rid of an idea. So, which is right. a good policy to have. So, um, and he's I'm getting, glad, I, I'm, yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, I was going to say, and I guess we're not really talking about the reason we're not giving the context to why yeah. this, uh, interview was, is he's getting the writing credit, right. Of some sort. Um, and I don't remember Correct. if they're going to say it's his story or based on a story by him or whatever, but. Uh, because he dedicated as much as he did. There's uh, you know, rules out there that say if you write over 50% or they use you know, 40% yeah. of your storyline, you get some credit. So we will see his name in, in the credits for uh, The Rise of Skywalker. Which is good. I think it's good to honor, honor him. You know, they did that with uh, Lord Miller as well. So yeah. I, I think that's a good thing. It's, it saves face, I guess, at the end of the day. So, you know, can't hurt. Yeah. Um, there was an interview with Rolling Stone that Kathleen Kennedy did. Uh, we posted that. Um, I think we posted it on Discord. I don't think we posted anything on on our social media pages, but and this is a no. it was a pretty lengthy interview. There was a lot going on here. I don't think there was anything too shocking. I know there was a lot of controversy about some one of the quotes that she said about not having any um any uh nope. stories yeah. or comic books or anything and that they were kind of doing all of this and, and it kind of got I think it really got taken out of context. Um I'm well, like, we'll get to say what you will well, about her, yeah. right? Whether you like her or not. What she was trying to say, the point that she was trying to make was unlike Lord of the Rings or unlike Game of Thrones, where they had these stories that where they were taking and turning those into movies, they consciously made a decision at the very beginning to say, you know what, we're not going to do that. We are going to allow these directors and these writers to come up with their own material. And so the point that she was trying to make was with they didn't have anything to go off. They were trusting these writers to come up with these unique stories without relying on anything that had come in the past. Somehow that got skewed. Uh, people took that out of context and said, it, it, they made it out like Kathleen Kennedy said there was nothing out there that they could have borrowed. And they had the little Will Smith thing where he's pointing <laughs> at all the books of uh, from EU and the comics. Well, and stuff. let's, in That's defense of Kathleen, I don't blame her for not using all that other stuff. And I <laughs> in the old EU, EU, because I, I know a lot of people like the old we EU, love the EU. Yeah, but was I it don't really. It if you're being completely honest it, with yourself. It wasn't all that, and then some. There were I some mean, good stories was, in there. I'm I mean, not yeah, saying there were. were. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, and I think what she was, and I agree with what you're saying. It's it's out of context. And now I'm not. I'm not, this is twice I've defended Kathleen in, in two weeks. And you're weeks not here. an apologist for her. I can, uh, no, I can uh, no, tell I the can, audience that right now. I am not her biggest fan, but I think I agreed with her on firing Lord and Miller. I think she did the right thing there. And even here, I think it's again out of context because I think what, she, like you were saying, is they're trying to start from a new. They're not trying to, to yeah. just take from what was before because that would be too predictable. And that's, they wanted to try something new and different. Now, you can argue, was that good or bad? Well, that's depends on your point of view. Exactly. Uh, however, though, if you watch things and see things that are going on, they pull from the old EU many, many times. You know, you got Thrawn, you got yes. even Ben Solo. I mean, it was Ben Skywalker and, and you know, yep. the Solo. Exactly. So there's, there's even Ray, you could say, is, you know, based off of one of the characters in the old EU and stuff. So they take it. It's just not... What you expect, I guess you could say. They do borrow from the legends, so to speak. Uh, I, I think she was just trying to make the point of like, well, we're, we're trying to create something new. So it's like we don't have that source material yet. But they do. But that she, that's not where they were going with. And I think if right. she could, she would take that back. It's one of those things where like you say something like I do every five minutes and you wish you could take it all back. But you can't. So... You know, it's a bit of a flub there. Um, and unfortunately, because it's Kathleen Kennedy, she's a lightning rod among the fans. And this is what happens. Now, I'm not her biggest fan. And I, you know, it's been known. So I have to defend her here. I think it was taken a little bit out of context. But hey, if you disagree with me, that's then so be it. I don't really care. But anyway. So be it. Moving on. Yet I. I actually, I'll say this about Rolling Stone. I got to give him credit because this is a magazine that's. I, I normally like there's all softballs with all these magazines and stuff. And they actually hit some her. pretty, yeah, they gave her some good questions. So yeah. I got to hats off to them. That's, that's, you know, what journalism used to be. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, um, yeah. Well said. Um, Dave Filoni. Yes. Just recently also said, we still want to keep a lot of things a mystery. We don't want to go around answering things and making them less special. And he's directly referring to baby Yoda and we're going to call it baby Yoda. We're not going to talk yes. about whether that's right or wrong, but that's what we're calling it. 
Uh, and this was very. Um, uh, now, this was from Entertainment Tonight. They interviewed him and, and I think John Favreau. They were just talking and then, then they mentioned it or whatever. Uh, and this is this is actually a relief to me because I'd said, yep. I think two episodes ago, I was like, I don't want to know all the answers. I don't want to know all this. And I was concerned that we were going to do that because I'd mentioned it with Kenobi. I don't want to know everything about Kenobi. Uh, just give me the juicy stuff. But don't don't, you know, give us all the the stuff that was a mystery for the last 40 years. Right. So right. Uh, and and this, again, proves why we trust Dave and we love Dave. And and right here, this proves that and I'm glad glad he came out and said it. So. Yeah. And I think, I mean, and there's nothing, I mean, there are people out there that, uh, I mean, there's, you gotta think about it. There's generation, there's a whole nother generation of people, probably two generations now that are okay with knowing what Yoda is. I think if you, um, and, and, and I'm not, I don't want to classify everybody into these generations, but I think those of us that maybe grew up with the original trilogy are probably hold Yoda in, in, in George's view of not really ever wanting to give out any information on it and the mystery, the mystery and the mystique of that character, we probably hold that closer to our hearts than maybe somebody that's coming in with the sequel trilogy, right? What is, what is it to them? Uh, again, they've got different characters, different perspectives. Um, they may, maybe they do want to know, and there's nothing wrong with that. For me, uh, I just, again, this is my own personal opinion. This is what I wanted. I, I, I still want there to be mystery. I like that they've, what they've done so far, they really haven't given us a whole lot. And of course, we're only three, three chapters into the Mandalorian. Um, but my guess is, and my hope was that we weren't going to get a whole lot of information. We may get a little little nuggets here and there, tidbits about the about the character itself. But the race, I think it's I think is uh, probably I think it's more intriguing if they don't really uh, reveal anything. Right. I think it's playing right oh, into the story yeah. of what's happening right now in the Mandalorian. Uh, so if they keep that going, I think it's just going to be even better. Yeah. So I, I mean, I hope we don't get anything really other than what we've got with with baby Yoda, to be honest. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to know too much. Uh, I'm curious where they're going to drop them off. <laughs> that's that's the big question. I, I did speculate on Mando Monday, but we'll get into that in a few minutes anyway. But I, think anyway. The, I wouldn't I wouldn't be I would actually be OK with the name of the race. Um, I know this uh, may sound sacrilegious, but this is this is me. I I would be OK hey, with right. the name of the race and I would probably be OK with they gave it a name. So we would stop calling it Baby Yoda. All right. Well, I'll, I'll give you. There's got to be a bit of a give and take. So maybe the name of the species and we give this guy some kind of a nickname or something other than baby Yoda. I mean, yeah. although baby Yoda is cool. I yeah, mean, come cool on. Name. Right. I mean, I, I like calling him that. So I, I actually, I, I maybe we'll get, give us the name of the species. Don't give a name of a baby Yoda. Let's just call him that till episode nine when he shows up and kicks everyone's butt. I don't know. <laughs> because we refer to it as the, uh, the Yoda species or the species of Yoda and Yaddle or, you know, whatever we always, we use yeah. that, right? So we're already using his name, um, in there. So why not just finally pull the bandaid off and say, okay, we're going to call it this and we're not going to know anything else about it. We don't know where they come from. We don't know their home planet. We don't know their history. They're just out there. And this is another one that they're trying to find for nefarious reasons. I would have to say there's two things I'll take from this. One, they're force sensitive. And two, they're probably very rare. I'll leave it at that. That's that, and I want to keep it that way. Just keep it, keep it the mystery, and I think they will. So, yeah. and if Dave reveals anything about it, I think he'll do it in a way that's respectful and satisfying to all of us. I think so. I'm not too worried. Yeah, no, he's he's got a he's got a good heart there, and certainly knows how to probably walk that line with making mm. everybody happy. Yes. Um, all right. Last bit of news before we get into the episode. Uh, we got the show descriptions for episodes four or sorry, I should say chapters four, five and six of the Mandalorian. Uh, chapter four, the Mandalorian teams up with an ex-soldier to protect a village from raiders. Boy, finally, I wonder Gina. who that's going to be. Yeah. Yes. My uh, girl. She's I'm finally coming to on. I know. I can't wait to see her character. I think she's going to be a badass and I just I love it. Uh, the other uh, chapter five, the Mandalorian helps a rookie bounty hunter who is in over his head. Hmm. That I don't know. That's that's an interesting one because I don't see anything that indicates, you know what I mean, like the baby Yoda, really. Um, yeah. So that's an interesting one. Because I know, yeah, way, yeah. Go ahead. Mm, well, I was just trying to think of like what bounty hunter if it, if they're going to introduce somebody new, uh, it, that would probably it, be the best thing. Yeah. But if they were trying to use a character that we've already been introduced to, the two that come to mind. Uh, Dominic Pace is an actor that's been. Oh yeah, the gecko stinkor of the bounty hunters. Yes, he's he's been out on just about every podcast, uh, but this one. 
uh, uh, talking about his character for, uh, and he was in this episode in chapter three. Well, Don, uh, Dom, if you're Dominic, if you're listening, you, you can come on the show. We, you oh, know, yeah. Just, you know, anyone's invited really at this point. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like anything other than me that, how about that? <laughs> yeah. That would work. If, we can get if we can get somebody else other, on here other than Mike, that would be a huge plus. So please call. Oh my calls. God, yes, it would be great. Everybody would um, have you. We win all around. But continue, sir. No, so Dominic Pace's character, and I, I'm, he's probably got a name, and I apologize. Gecko, I, I don't. Gecko, okay, thank uh, you. Yes, Gecko, I believe. So maybe that character, although that I don't know if that's going to really work because he was one of the ones that was kind of shooting the Mandalorian. So I don't know if that's yeah, really I don't, gonna I don't well. see that. Uh, yeah. But the 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 Mandalorian, the bounty hunter that gets his gets the riot act read to him by uh grief right before the mando comes in in chapter three with all his full beskar armor on mm. that guy maybe that maybe it's that guy because they they uh i guess they showcase him i don't know for, for lack of a better term like it just felt like it was weird that they called him out like that and then he went to the bar and then i don't and i'm spoiling this because we're gonna i want to talk about this later but i'm talking about it now <laughs> he's sitting at the bar and at yeah. one point he says Ichuta, which is the same thing that that one droid says in The Empire Strikes Back to C-3PO. Yes, which is a swear. Which yeah, is it's a, swear. a cursing or whatever. So, uh, yeah, but well, anyways, you, you, it sounds very much like uh, E to blank. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. That's how I always interpreted it. So, um, yeah, maybe. I guess I never thought about it that way. But yeah, you're no, right. of course not. I, of course, I'm, I'm the, the jerk. So, yes. But yeah. anyway, continue, sir. Well, so, yeah. So there's a bounty hunter, that a rookie bounty hunter. He's going to help. So. Or maybe it's another Mandalorian. I don't know. Maybe it's somebody in in the guild, or or sorry, the um, the uh, covert, right? Who knows? No, maybe. maybe. Um, and then chapter six, the Mandalorian joins a crew of mercenaries on a dangerous mission. That's interesting. Well, that that's going to be from the the teaser we had with the Twi'lek, and I think uh, mm -hmm. what's the comedian's name there? Now his his name escapes my mind. Uh, Bill Burr. Uh, you know yes. the guy with the the, the guns, all, all the blasters and everything. Has to do with that, I think. So again, yeah, we've though, seen that we've seen that mercenary crew, I think, already. Yes, I I don't see anything about baby Yodes uh, going anywhere. <laughs> like I just, I'm, so now my speculation in Mando Monday, and I'll just say it now, just to get it out of the way, is he drops them off at that village. That's Which my one? Uh, the, the village. village? The, uh, yeah, in ep episode four, where where the the protect oh, the oh, village gotcha. from the raiders. Mm -hmm. That's where I think he he does it. That's. If I had to guess, which is going to leave a lot of things of like, huh, what are we doing? You know, that type of thing. And of course, I think he gives him the little, the little knob on the thing. And that's that he doesn't that's have the knob rattle. on the ship. Yeah. He doesn't have the knob on the ship anymore, which I think would be pretty cool. But anyway. Yeah. yeah to be able to see that every week and know that that yeah. knob is still missing. Yeah. Eh. Exactly. Yeah, I like that, idea. That, would, that would, well, that would aggravate you. I know that because you, you know. <laughs> it's incomplete. You'd go it, nuts, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, it needs you? to be back, right? He, why wouldn't he just buy another one and replace it? Give the kid that one. Well, he, he, one can go, he can go see Quill there and, and get a, another one. I mean, he's a master mechanic out in the desert there, so. True. All right, well, let's get into the sin. Uh, this is uh, chapter three, so, yeah. We've the sin of couple... Mike Rondo is what we're calling this episode. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. The, <laughs> this, uh, this, well, it should be sins. Uh, but anyway, continue the, um, if you haven't seen the episode, turn the podcast off, go watch it. But I mean, you, you've already gone this yeah, far. You've already watched it. You've already listened to Mando Monday. So just, you know, that's true. You which, probably already have listened to that. Although you might've shut it off after two minutes, Mando Monday, and I wouldn't blame you this week, but anyway. All right. Let's talk about, um, so this opens up, picks up right at, right where obviously chapter two ends. And, um, we get this. <laughs> We get this really cool moment where he's talking to grief. And I, I do want to talk about this because it, it was one of the things and I, I posted on, I posted a lot today on social media, but one of the things <laughs> that I posted on Twitter uh, was we had this one line in here where he tells him it's not a toy. And we were talking about the little knob that came off that little um, know, yeah, lever, yeah. whatever it was. And I, I mentioned that we've already had two really great uh, li liners, I guess, or uh, quotes in, in from the Mandalorian in uh, I have spoken and this is the way. But this is the one that resonated the most with me. It's not a toy because I can't tell you how many times uh, mm -hmm. I have had to say that to a number of kids, not only just not even my own kids. Uh, right. And just it's just something that as a, as a parent or if you watch kids or take care of them, whatever, this is just this is what you say a lot for whatever reason. Well, my father said just... it to me every five minutes as a kid. So <laughs> I mean, right. that, I mean, I automatically thought of my father, not so much me. But yeah. I mean, I say it to my daughter almost every day anyway so sure. but that i thought that was a funny moment yeah it's a great it's a great parenting moment and i think this is where favreau is is really 
you know, he didn't have to put that line in there. Um, but if you're a dad and you're and you're writing this thing or you're a mom and you're writing this, you're writing, this is just something that naturally happens. And so it just speaks to the dialogue and how casual and real, I guess, it can be even in Star Wars land. So anyways, enough of mm. that. I thought it was a great line and I really enjoyed it. So um, but he take, he goes back and lands um, to go turn in baby Yoda. And uh, it was very interesting. There was a moment there where he's kind of walking, you know, once they get off the razor crest and they're walking down. Um, that U-wing catch your eye? Yeah. Well, the U-wing and the quad jumper. I don't know if he caught that. There's one moment um, in there. There's a quad jumper that's a, all the way in the back. I'd have to look again. But but the U-wing, they did that for a reason. Well, maybe they just did it for ambiance. But there's a reason why that was so, like, like pronounced to me. I, I didn't talk about that on Mando Monday, but for some reason, I, maybe that's the bounty hunter that we're going to help out in a few episodes. Maybe that's his ship. I don't know. But yeah. anyway. Well, no, and I think you're hitting on, I think you're touching on what I, what I, what I am as well in that, that shot was very interesting that it went as long as it did. That's, it, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Right. It, with yeah. baby Yoda just kind of looking around and, and so it got me thinking, okay, either they're trying to showcase or, the U-Wing or maybe it's the quad jumper that's it's really brief in there that you see it in the background or maybe he's been here before or or, or there's something there that they're going to tie later on with Yoda, little baby Yoda or somehow. Uh, I don't know. It was just a weird shot. I mean, that's that it, possible that be, because it seems like he might know Pershing, Dr. Pershing in, in the client. Um, so there's that chance that he was there before and he was just right, taken right. from there. So Right. And he's looking around going, holy crap, I'm back. Yeah. Yeah. You um, can't get away. Yeah. The uh, the question um, once he gets in there was he mentions like how many fobs um, did you give out? Yeah. Did you give out? Yeah. And this is a bit of confusion for me. Again, it goes back to IG eleven. See, I said it right. I can do it. Um, where you know he's talking to the client. The client's like, "Well, we want him alive, but I understand bounty hunting is complicated, and if it's dead, it's dead." All these other bounty hunters, unless unless they just go in for the easy claim of the or reward, right? Where they just mm -hmm. kill baby Yoda and bring him in and, and it's easy. I guess that's the way to do it. And maybe IG 11's logical was like, all right, killing it is better than taking care of it and risking all this <laughs> other stuff. Right. So, yeah. Um, but, no, this, you know, yeah. yeah the, the thing about this the, is the fob thing is, is my biggest hurdle in this season so far. And, and, and we, maybe we can get into it in a minute. And I'll let you do your thought now, sir. I don't mean to cut you off, but go, go no, ahead. no, it's 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 just it's around the fact that okay, so they gave out a bunch of these fobs, and the originally again his orders, and I, we talked about this in the last episode, but I'm going to say it again. His original orders were you can you bring it in alive, but we're willing to bring it in dead if you need to as well. Uh, Doctor Pershing did not want that, right? He wanted it alive. Correct, um, yeah. But IG 11's orders, he says, were strictly to bring it in dead. So I don't, I don't buy that IG Eleven had a fob that was given out by at least this guild, right? There has to, there yeah. has to be someone else, I think, other than the client that had well, bounty see, hunters I, trying to go in after after Baby Yoda. Did I? I think I speculated either on this or Mando Monday that maybe it's the New Republic that wanted this creature dead. Maybe which would that's a whole other interesting topic. Uh, the Republic doing some shady stuff. Yeah, that no, you wouldn't we, think we, they would normally do. Yeah, we were hashing that out in Discord. It it may it it could be somebody that we would consider being good because of the threat that this poses, right? If you go down this maybe path, it's Luke. Mm, maybe it's <laughs> Luke. If you go down this path, that this thing is um could disrupt the balance in some way, right? Or give somebody mm -hmm. an advantage in some way. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't want to say that maybe the New Republic, either some some you know corrupt senator or somebody in the New Republic that wants this thing dead and they've paid the money and, and maybe maybe not the New Republic itself, but maybe somebody within the New Republic that's got some uh, their own nefarious reasons, which maybe they think Leia. are for the the better right, or they think their intentions are good, but when they're technically not. So yeah, um, well, I mean that's a whole see. There's little things like that. I mean there are a lot of details in the show you have to pay attention to, and I think this is one of those things that. Yeah, they have a plan to to explain this all at some point. They're just not doing it right now. Yeah. Um. But again, the fob thing is my biggest thing. Like, how do we? How is this tracking somebody? And how do they not use this with Luke and even Yoda and and Obi Wan back in the day? Like, how how does this work? Is it, are they tracking the GPS on their cell phone? What, what's going on? I, you know, that's my problem. But hopefully, they'll explain it at some point and it makes sense to me, and I can say, okay, good. I, that satisfies me. I can move on. Um. 
Yeah, anyway. I think you're. I think you're getting to Albert Padilla here because I don't. I don't think it really matters. Mm, but maybe, maybe. I I, I think the only reason I bring this up is because I feel like it cheapens what bounty hunters would typically do. Like they would, you know, find out all the information. They would track you. They would do their thing, and they wouldn't have a fob to do it. I mean, we didn't see Boba Fett with a fob. We didn't see any of the others. We didn't see any of that during the Clone Wars or anything like that. So I'm not saying that that. George didn't have that idea and that Dave and him didn't discuss it before. And that you know, when John came aboard, they kind of went with it or anything, but I mean, it's possible. I don't know. I just need answers. Darn it. Well, maybe they don't do So maybe fobs only happen after. So maybe after they've uh, captured somebody, they put them on bail. There's some DNA sample that they capture. Right. And then that gets programmed into the fob and they have a way to track it. I don't know. Because maybe. yeah, you're right. There, there are probably other there are probably other situations where they need to bring somebody in and they don't have a fob. I don't think I just don't think it's one of these things where everybody can get a fob for somebody else without any kind of uh you know having never touched them or gotten some DNA pattern or scanned them in some way. I just don't think that's possible, right? Well, if it's a DNA thing, then why do we need the midi chlorians to suck out of them? I, well, I don't know because no DNA is different from midi chlorians. Yeah. I guess I don't, don't know. That's don't. Don't with cross Doc- the streams on that. Sorry, sorry. With Dr. Pershing when we need him. <laughs> right. Um, all right, let's get back to the story. So uh, yes. I got to say I was gutted as Baby Yoda was getting pulled away and he was kind of heading to the back there and he's kind of look, turns around and looks back at, at the Mandalorian. It just broke my heart. See, this is why I'm a heartless bastard because I was, <laughs> I was all like, good, he's coming here and he's getting paid and we're moving on to another story. Yeah. But, but we hear, I know better. I but know this better is where we get that. the uh, the soft part of the Mandalorian because he says, "What are your plans for it?" And I I like that the client was immediately just like fired back. I mean, he almost looked disgusted, right, in his face. Yeah, that he said, "How uncharacteristic of someone of your reputation to have even asked that." Right. Yeah. Uh, I thought that was great, especially he said after the you know he'd already gotten his commission and he already gotten his payment that these things should be forgotten, and that speaks to the code of bounty hunters and what we would expect from typical bounty hunters, but. Um, you know, we're not getting that here. And I want to, I want to come back to that at the very end of the show, because I do have some, I want to pick your brain on where this show is going and, and, and how much, at least for me, it feels like it's really diverting from what I thought it was going to, which I think is pretty exciting, but none, we'll come back. Well, to I, don't, I don't just pause. Yeah, just yeah. wait. It will come back. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The, uh, the Camtano or Camtono or Camtano, Camtono, the ice cream mm-hmm. thing. Will Ro- Will Ro- Hood. Uh, yes. we finally got to see that in canon, I guess, or it was already in canon. Yeah, see, but... he wasn't running with ice cream. He had his whole Beskar <laughs> with him running around. I don't blame the guy. So Maybe it know. was. Maybe there was Beskar. Maybe I think it was it's the same Beskar. Used, I think it was used, I think it's supposed to be like a safe, right? A personal safe. Yeah. I don't know if it was strictly uh, created <laughs> to hold Beskar, but um, you know the, uh, the name where that came from? What name? The Camtano? No. Um, not offhand though. So you'll have so, to please inform so get me this. of if the you obscure out, pop culture. Here reference. we go. You go back yep. out to YouTube and go to 2017 and do a search for little girl trying to say ice cream. There was a viral that a could video lead, lead to a whole lot of things no, no, you no. don't want. Sir. There was a video that went viral about two years ago, and it's it's really this young little girl. She's can't I don't know. She's maybe maybe two years old, one years old. Uh, and the dad keeps trying to ask her to say ice cream. And he does, he poses it co- several different ways. And she says every single word up until that exactly the way she's supposed to say it. But instead of saying ice cream, she would always say Camtano. Um, and I cannot, I don't know if this has been confirmed, but I can't, I just, I, I refuse to believe that that's not where John Favreau got the name for this device and where he got a call from. So go, go watch the video yourselves. You come back and let us know if that's, if you think, uh, if you're as crazy as I am. So you're crazy. Moving I on. I really am. All right. Moving on meeting with the armorer, which I thought was pretty, I mean, this was one of my favorite scenes. Any so far, every scene that he goes back there with her on seems pretty cool. Um, well, but, we get the layers of, of what makes him, him. Although I have a few theories that I've, i Throughout there on Mando Monday with all with the flashbacks and what's going on there, but it was very cool to see the dynamics of the clan, right? Like in yeah. in how that is because apparently this is a mishmash of clans because you got uh, Paz Vizsla, which is Clan Vizsla, obviously. Mm-hmm. You got the Mandalorian, who we don't know too much yet, 
And then you got the the armorer who's got the Darth Maul helmet looking thing. Um, and I'm sure some of the, one of them was uh, Clan Wren was probably there and we didn't really see. So I, I don't know what's going on there, but I love every time we go down there and and we see the way things are going. And I mentioned in the uh, Mando Monday where where, you know, she's counting the best car and looking at it. And these two are squabbling and she doesn't even bat an eye. And then she's like, all right, listen, this is the way. Yeah. And then they're all like, hey, all right, cool. And the Vibro Blades again made their yep. their thing again. So it's awesome to see that. Um. But yeah, I think I, that I confirmed that was it cool. too. Yeah. We had the yeah. question about um in the last oh, yeah, one yeah. when you cite in the uh the mud worn guy yeah, uh, whether or not that was it. a vibro blade, and I think that yeah. was confirmed obviously in this episode. Which is why he died. So Right. Yeah. As easy as he did. Yeah. So um but yeah, the other key takeaways were I mean, they mentioned that Beskar, um I, I I'm almost a hundred percent confident at this point that the purge that they refer to was literal was truly uh, the Empire coming in and wiping, decimating uh, Mandalore, decimating the Mandalorians to the point that you just made that they've really all that's left of them is this kind of, uh, you know, Frankenstein group of clans that are living under the ground. I mean, he even says that they're living like rats is, yeah. the, is the word that he uses, which I think is crazy because when we le- like and, and I said this last episode, sorry, I'm repeating myself, but when we see the Mandalore, uh, the Mandalorians in uh, Rebels. They're not. That's what I mean. This purge had to be soon after that, right? Yes. That was yeah, I was speculating agree. when I, yeah, Amanda Monday, I was speculating. I'm like, when did this, it's not the siege of Mandala, which I was no. thinking at the beginning. Um, That has to do, and I don't even know if that really is the Mandalorian, his character, or Din on Mandalore. I don't know if that's the case there. So, but in case we'll get to that in a, at some point. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah and this, I think it happens yeah. shortly or right after yeah. that or right after Rebels ends, something happens to the Mandalores. They get completely wiped out. So I definitely believe that. Yeah. But um, it, the interest or but the interesting thing is they like Sabine doesn't mention it in her little wrap up there. Right. At, at the, the end, end of uh, Rebels. Yeah. But it was more to concern with the family group and, and the rebellion. Right. So. Yeah. yeah. In any case. Yeah. No, that's true. It's a good point. Uh, maybe they'll true that up. Maybe they won't. Yeah. Um, you mentioned Paz Vizsla, which I thought was cool. That was played by, or at least voiced by Favreau, which, I mean, as soon as he starts speaking, you, there's no denying Which that is a great, if you're going to bring a Vizsla into it, you might as well have him do it. Right. <laughs> right. Bring, I mean, bring back so, the original. Exactly. And, you know, he, he probably couldn't help himself. He's like, well, I'm going to voice this. Right. No one else can play this with me. So <laughs> Exactly. I'm a Vizsla, man. I'm going to yeah. do it. So. And you then know, the Black I, Series figure came yeah. out this week, coincidentally. Yeah. Wow. I, yeah. I planned that one. Wink, wink. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that um, was interesting. It, I I like that that whole dynamic. Like, this is the way, obviously, must have happened after the Purge, right? Like, it, it's interesting how the Mandalorians and the Jedi were wiped out by the Empire. Like, they took out their biggest competitors, or not competitors, but uh, threats, threats, if you will, yeah. With, yeah. with the Mandalorians, because they can stand up to Jedi and Sith as well. And uh, and the Jedi. So that, that I thought that was really cool that they were both in a similar situation and maybe they'll rise, uh, which makes even Sabine and Ezra and Kanan working together all that more important in my mind because yeah. they were all wiped out and they're now working together. But anyway, anyway yeah, continue. No, the um, one of the other lines that stood out for me here, one of the other uh, quotes is she says, our secrecy is our survival. Our survival is our strength. Um, and I guess it didn't dawn on me that that they were not only are they living as rats underground and and all that, but they're living in secrecy. And later on, I think one of them says we can only come out one at a time. So yeah. like only one Mandalor- and, and I, I'm, I'm taking that in a literal sense until somebody in the show proves otherwise or says otherwise. But it sounds to me, taken at face value, that they don't all go out at one time. Right. They send maybe one person out. They go run errands and they come back. So to kind of hide their numbers, because, I mean, you see one Mandalorian, you've probably seen them all, right? But it yeah. sounds like they are really all living underground and they don't get out much. So, that you know, the secrecy, I think, is interesting. And and, and I w- we can talk about this now, I guess. At the very end of this, this is kind of a game changing episode, not only for the Mandalorian, but for Mandalorians in general, because they're out. Right. They Everybody knows now that there's a lot of them and they just wiped out on almost an entire guild of bounty hunters so you know they are being hunted and i think it's the uh the uh armorer she makes a quote in there also about you know when they call him a coward 
uh, when they call him the Mandalorian coward or, or a traitor or whatever, because he's been sitting there, you know, making deals with the Empire, that how can he be considered that when to be a Mandalorian means that you are both the hunter and the hunted, mm-hmm. right? So the the point of that is, uh, you know, their secret their secrets up, and they're going to have to move the convert somewhere, and it just makes you wonder now. Okay, so now they're going to be hunted by the the guild or maybe guilds in general. Uh, maybe there's some you know uh, they've broken some law or underlining law that says that if you know one guild's broken then or one guild's uh, crossed then all the other guilds kind of rally behind it or whatever. I don't know what that's going to play like. But then you've got the empire too or what's left of them. And then there's really not much of the empire left, but you may, you have, you may have splinter groups or these, the, the outlaws, the warlords, the the warlords, exactly. That have decided that they want to wipe out whatever remnants of the Mandalorians are out there because they don't want them to rise up or, you know, rebuild their ranks in some way. So anyways, I just think it was a really game changing episode, especially with what we saw at the very end uh, with them all kind of coming out and, you know, decimating the, the poor little uh, guild there. Um, (laughs) Yeah, so, um, yeah, we talked about him being a coward. Um, and then we got the, uh, there were some foreshadowing moments. There was two, I guess, in this episode. Of, and this is, I think, where we got the first one where the armorer asks, have you ever removed your helmet? He says no. So He hesitates, saw, though. He does hesitate. He does, yeah, yes. no, it's a good point. He does hesitate. The uh, So maybe he's not being truthful there. But, um, so, and I don't know that we ever got this, because the, the Mandalorians from Clone Wars, they took their helmets off. Oh yeah, I mean we saw them. This all the is time. after the fact. This is after the purge, so they don't. You can't tell who's you know, who. who they are. Yeah, so like when they go out one at a time, you don't. You don't know. So except the big guy, we kind of know. You know, you see well, him. You're yeah. like, oh, there's the bigger one. Maybe that's why he's upset because he's he's like, <laughs> I got this big armor. They could tell me. <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a, I'm a little thicker man. I can't I can't hide this. Maybe they don't send him out. Anyways. Yeah. Um. No, but so. The uh, the foreshadowing here is that and she she then asks him, has anybody ever removed your helmet? And he says, no. So mm-hmm. I wonder if that's going to be something, because I think that's going to be a that's really the cool moment. Yeah, it's the yes. villain, whoever the baddie is at some point here. Uh, I think well, Baby Yoda does it. You know, it's not Baby Yoda. Yo, come on. It's Baby Yoda. Going to take the helmet off. Going to want to play with it. So, you know, he's going to feel bad. You're going to give him the helmet. No, I'm only kidding. No, well, I think that'd be a girl- special moment, though. Like he only takes it's, it off for baby. Yet. Oh, you're right, Mike. I like that. Good no, thinking. forget it. I don't like cute Star Wars. Um, no, it's going to be the woman in the village from the promo there. You know, Maybe. helmet sex. We got hand sex, helmet sex. You know, no. it's all over the place. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, anyway. um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know where that's going. Well, let me, let, let's talk about the flashback for a minute. Is And I don't mean to throw you off game here, but do you think that's on Mandalore? Do you think that's the Siege of Mandalore? Because I don't think it is. Mm, do I think it's the Siege of Mandalore? Yeah, do you think that's where he was seeing this? No, I don't no. believe so. Yeah, I don't think so either. Because I, I don't, I, well, he's not, a, to me, I don't think he's, he's a not Mandalore, a pure, Mandalorian yeah. at all. Well, he was a foundling, which obviously is why he's, you know, with Yoda there and all that stuff. So, but yeah, I don't think that's Mandalore. And tell me if I'm wrong. Like that setup shot where they, he, the battle droid opens, the super battle droid opens the thing. You tell me there's not a lightsaber that's going to come flinging through that thing. You can, Maybe. you got to, you, no, there is, it's going to be. Either that or it's a Mandalorian. I, but I'm telling you, it's going to be Ahsoka. It has to be. It's got to so, be. If it's Mandalore, if they're on Mandalore, then that would make sense. It would be that. But I personally would love to see it being maybe Kenobi and Anakin together. That would be pretty cool one more time on the screen like that. Um but then again, it could be Yoda himself, which is even more into the psychology of the the character and why he feels sympathy for Yoda. I don't know. Baby Yoda, I should say. I don't know. What, what are your thoughts on that? You think I I'm think crazy? You're wrong. Okay. That's yeah, good. you tell me to tell I, you and I think you're wrong. So right. I don't well, well no, why do no, you I'm think kidding. why do you think I'm wrong? I don't I don't see them It's Filoni. He's gonna act, he, that's that episode, episode five. That's when it's gonna get resolved. I'm telling you. I don't you. know, man. I yeah. ju- I just can't um, see them. I mean, maybe Ahsoka, if they do, I would really be skeptical that they show you. Maybe you see two lightsabers, one green, one blue, and that's all you see. And you, 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 it alludes to that it's her that rescues her. Well, she I gets don't a think- blue lightsaber in the, in the, the, uh, the Clone Wars season seven there. Remember? Cause it's yeah, on sorry. the fly. Sure. So if you Regardless, see two, it, I don't, I don't yeah. think, I just don't know that they, they would put her in there. They may uh, insinuate that it, it was her, or they may allude to the fact that it may was maybe was her or a Jedi. I think that would be well, cool. 
I don't my, think they go any farther than that, though. My theory is you see the lightsabers and then you see her hand reaching out to him. That's how you could do that. So it's like, all right, it's Ahsoka, but we don't see Ahsoka. So later on, if they want to do something, they can cast whoever they want to cast. That's, that's my theory. Mm. Although I would love to see Kenobi, considering we're going to have a Kenobi series, and that would no. be it. I personally would like to see Hayden in and you and doing their thing. But, you know, I, this is just me, you know, geeking no, I know, out I know, and wanting I get things. I, I, you know. So I get it. And that would be really cool. I think you get Ahsoka at most. And I think you only get Ahsoka if it's on Mandalore. Because you got to think about it. If well, he's on Mandalore, thing, it, it if he's on Mandalore sense. and she rescues him, what is she going to do with this child? She's probably going to give it to people around her and, and, and that sort of thing. But if it's not on Mandalore, oh. why would she take the baby and put them, put, take that child and put him under the care of a of a group of people that had just been decimated. I think she would give it to Bo Katan, and she would do but what why, she though? does. I because I don't know why wouldn't she give I it could, to the new the new republic or or not the new republic, but well, give because it to the, uh, the, well, the gotta, republic. Because you got to understand that she's on the run too. She had to fake her death with Rex. So you know when all that happens. You know, that's what happens. So maybe she gives them to Bo and that's why he becomes a Mandalorian. I'm just throwing wild things out there, man. Maybe something <laughs> will stick. I don't know. No, that's cool. There's, I get it. No, yeah, I mean, well, well, if it happens, I'm coming, I'm going to be on the next episode to remind you. That oh, I know. You I, will. I, I was, I, yeah, you, yeah. That's fair. You can yeah. lay, lay me out on the Because I was going to bet money on this earlier in the week and I'm almost positive we're going to see lightsabers lying through that chest i'm just is it like that one time that you were gonna get a tattoo on your chest if uh, no 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 i was gonna dye my hair pink if uh yeah. someone wasn't was cast or something like that yeah yeah it was oh, ages right. ago yeah yeah all right moving on all right well we'll find out nonetheless i think we i think no so i think we can both agree there's more to that scene obviously it's going to play out and i think we're going to probably get no I, I would say i would go on record as saying we are going to find out who rescues them at least in some way and how he eventually gets into the Mandalorians, whether it's he's a part of the Mandalorians already or he's not or whatever. I think we're going to get yeah. that. Um, let's talk about the Mudhorn signet because we were joking about this in Discord. <laughs> yeah, this she asked him, <laughs> yeah, she says, um, you know, hey, did you get your signet? Or And he's like, yeah, I, or, you know, I fought a Mudhorn. And she's like, oh, okay. He's like, whoa, wait, no, no, I, uh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no it's I okay. Want a cooler let's, one. Yeah. yeah I mean, like, uh, I didn't really kill it myself. And, uh, um, like a Zillow beast counts. would be pretty cool. Like, <laughs> right. I would go with that. Something, yeah. you know, instead of a yeah, mudhorn. Yeah. That's that mudhorn thing. Not going to, no. it's not going to impress anyone. So, no, no. Yeah. Can't we just um, wait till I like, kill a, like a mythosaur or, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're extinct, but, you know, we can pretend. Sure. You know, uh, or a crate dragon, we could do that. That would be cool. Be I could cool. go with that. Yeah. Um, well, I hope we see that in, in the Kenobi series, to be honest. Um, okay, stay on stay on target. Yeah, okay. Um, but yeah, here's the thing I'm confused with the signet, because when he walks down there the first episode in chapter one, she's like, did your signet get revealed? And he's like, no. But yet here she's saying, do you want the signet? And it's like, uh, okay, what, what are we doing here? So I'm a little confused by that. I don't know. Is well, that... So yeah, no, I'm with you. I think um, the way I interpreted that was her asking, has your signet been revealed? I think is her way of asking, have you done something or fought something in battle that's been significant? And if so, what is it? Because that, I think maybe there's just some tradition that that becomes okay. your signet. You know what I'm saying? All right. That makes sense then. Yeah. But that clarifies anyways. it for me. Okay. Thank you. Just go with that. Um, we're gonna. Um, whistling birds. Awesome. I I need some. Those were cool. Like, I need the rifle to be honest. Well, let's <laughs> get to we'll get to the rifle in just a second oh, because that's okay. that is really cool. But um, but yeah, he mentions that the uh, since since they weren't going to do a signet, they had excess uh, Beskar left over, right? So mm -hmm. she ends up using that to create these whistling birds. And I remember when when the first time I saw this episode and she said whistling birds, I was like, that doesn't sound very threatening. <laughs> well, they whistle. <laughs> they whistle, right? Yeah. Um, so it makes but yeah, sense. It just it's, it's just interesting. It's it, I I like I actually I do like it. I, it's it's very uh it's very Japanese, right? Uh, I want to say, like, I want to say, I don't know if it was in Rebels that they used those. No, I, I don't know why. For some reason, my, my daughter's watching Rebels. I should ask her the whistling birds. Like I feel like one of them did that with their wrist rockets. I don't know. I could be wrong, huh. but sorry. Uh, I don't know. I didn't. 
I had didn't remember hearing it before, but I want to say Bo wrong. did it, but I I don't know. Anyway, I have to go look that up. I did not. Yes. Um, I did not remember that. Um, but anyway, so whistling birds, um, I thought was a was a cool weapon um, that he he got, and um, the uh, then obviously he makes a comment again about the excess beyond that is going to go back to the foundlings because they're the future, and then we they all together say this is the mm-hmm. way. This Listen, is the was, way. Uh, we talked about the flashback. Um, and let's get, let's jump next part of his when him coming into the bar and <laughs> grief does nothing for him. I don't know if he's called grief because that's what he does, but it, him walking into the bar, I mean, he's, you know, he's almost like bragging to everybody else about how much they suck and <laughs> how awesome the Mandalorian is. And it's like, you can tell the Mandalorian's like, you know, quiet, man, you're, you know, I'm already standing I'm already out. the knight in shining armor now. <laughs> exactly. Stop walking into this, you know, dirty, dusty bar. Do and, I get credit for that though? With my whole theory of you know he goes from the tattered, grubby looking thing to the white knight in shining armor. Um, I, that, yes, that judges. Yes, well they thank you. They, yes, we will give you credit for that. All right, okay, because I I think I'm right. But anyway, go ahead. Um, but yeah, no, he uh, he didn't really uh, do him any justice by by calling him out like that. Um, and it's also there in that moment too that we you know he's trying to get off world he's trying to go as far away as he can be she you know she already had, the the armor had mentioned that there, he was going to draw a lot of attention with this armor on there he's on top of that he's turned in this bounty that all the other bounty hunters were going after and so they're you know all eyes are on him and he's thinking i need to get away from here as far away as possible and he asked grief for the farthest uh bounty or the farthest puck and he picks up that Akbar, puck son yeah. Well, see, no, and I don't think it's Akbar. I, and don't get it's me wrong, Akbar, it's, Ak, it's Akbar's son. It's, I'm telling you. No. <laughs> so it's it's I'm in just our, like aggravating. No, <laughs> it's not that. It's just, I, and I get it because we do this all day with Star Wars, right? Every time we yeah. see something, we always want to do it. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. I actually just watched a, a, a PBS show or something about how the human brain wants to always try. It's our, it's in our natural DNA to want to tie things together, right? We always want to put things together, even though. There may not be a logical reason, and that's why optical illusions work and all that. Anyways, the point of that is the uh, when the puck goes down and you get the Orabesh writing that's up at the top, I was like, oh, man, I'm going to get out a pen. I'm going <laughs> to write this down. I'm going to get the name. I'm going to do a lot of research. You know what that thing says? Wanted. Wanted. <laughs> you can't read Arabesh? Come on now, you rookie. Uh, <sighs> man. Yeah, I was really disappointed. Yeah. Uh, um, anyways. maybe you shouldn't be, I, maybe I shouldn't have you host the show if you can't do Arabesh. <laughs> I can't, I, I'm sorry. I, I can't, I actually have an app I, on my phone that does it for me. But. Oh, wow. Look at that. Yeah. Oh yeah. That lazy. <laughs> I am that lazy. Well, it actually know, gives me heart. the, um, I've been doing this since I was six years yeah. old, man. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Some of us anyway. have been in this fight since we were six years old. No, it's, anyway. uh, the app actually lets you type in Arabesh to you. Like it'll translate it and you can copy and paste and all that. Anyways. Uh, I got you. And he mentions that he's going to go, this is on the oceans of Karnak, which yep. I don't, that doesn't sound familiar the dunes, to me. The dunes, the dunes, the dune oceans, I think he says, or something like that, which made me think, uh, what are dune oceans, like, what, or, or the oceans, dune, or whatever, I don't know. But anyway, he said yep. something like that. Yeah, something like that. Uh, he says it's a noble man who skipped bail. I don't know. I don't think it's Akbar. But whatever. No, That's it's not. I'm kidding. I'm just doing it to annoy you. Yep. That's what uh, I do. Mission Sorry. accomplished. Um, so let's, uh, so then he, um, he decides to go back, he, he, you know, gets in a ship and then he has that moment of, I can't go through with this fire powers, everything back down, disappointing over to go look for him. No, he's not. He goes back yeah, and did. looks for, for baby Yoda. And there was an Easter egg in here that I, I wanted to call out. And I don't know if you mentioned this on your show, but there, uh, at one point when he's kind of making his way back to the, uh, Imperial or what's left of that Imperial garrison, he comes around the corner. And if you look right, standing up, standing upright. Uh, as he mm-hmm. comes around the corner is that piece of metal that Leia uses to when they're in the trash compactor and she's like, get on top of it. And they grab that one long piece of metal and they're trying to keep it to they put it in between the the uh, compactor doors or whatever. That's mm-hmm. it standing right there in the background. So you're welcome if you didn't catch that. I did. Oh, I thought it was cool. Uh, yeah. And then he sees the little the poor uh, the little uh, what is it? Empty stroller. Egg. Yeah, the empty egg all crushed and. Uh, he gets very Sabine by blowing a hole in the door to go, oh, we, 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 hold on. Let's talk about the rifle. Yeah, please. Because this thing is awesome. I mean, it does everything. It disintegrates. <laughs> it shocks. Oh, it shocks. Uh, he uses it, it like a, a melee mode. weapon. Right. It goes into yeah. predator mode where he gets heat signatures. 
He can he's got Bluetooth he's, enabled where he can hear it coming through his helmet. My God, I got to get that thing. I mean, this I is awesome. one. I mean, this is the greatest weapon since the lightsaber. Yeah, I'm sorry, but it is. Yeah, it's yeah. it's really. Cool. I mean, the disintegrations alone, right? Are worth <laughs> yeah, it. very it's satisfying. Grief kind of like, oh boy, we get into something we shouldn't be. But uh, yeah, that rifle is all at the predator moment. Like, I had a smile on my face. It took me right back to like what 1986 when that came out and that whole scene. That yep. was awesome. Yeah, no, it was. It was. It was cool. And I don't he know is if a that predator. was intentional, but well, he is the predator at this point, right? He is yeah, he's he's the hunter them. who so. becomes the hunted. Um, yes. we get a line in there though, too, where it says, uh, you know, um, the, uh, he says, I order you to extract the necessary material and be done with it. This is the client telling that to Dr. Pershing. Um, and then Pershing retorts back. He has explicitly ordered us to bring it back alive. Um, so that's question that's questionable too. One, I think this bodes well for my theory that, uh, that I thought from, 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 yes. from the very first episode that this is what they were going after. As soon as I saw that it was force sensitive. Um, I think maybe that that is why why they want the midichlorians. I don't know. It could be a couple things. I think it has to do. I would like to see it have to do something with the emperor, whether they're using that to keep the emperor alive or they're using that to, I don't know, construct some kind of new body or something with kind of like they extracted the midichlorians from Luke's hand and sure. Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, right. Maybe or maybe uh, or maybe. maybe the Sith troopers. Uh, maybe the Sith uh, yeah, troopers are true. getting pumped with midichlorians and I don't know. Uh, this is all tin hat yeah. stuff again. Well, who is he though? Is it yeah, the know, and No, I, I, yeah, I had that same question when he says he has explicitly ordered us to bring it back alive. I don't think these guys would be ones that would talk directly to somebody like the emperor, right? No. So it's going to be the imperial guy that we see. What's the guy's name there? The, uh, well, what's his name? Oh, the guy in the TIE pilot thing, the TIE fighter there where he's hanging on with the the thing and he in the promo thing oh what's his name i can't think of his name even the actor's name i can't think of his name is it oscar something i want to say Ooh, i don't know what what are you talking about? yeah the guy the, the tie pilot the, the other imperial the, you remember the imperial that was with the, the guys with the flamethrowers or whatever that was outside that building in the in the trailers and stuff oh, oh you know, yeah, yeah 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 is it um, him who's probably answering to the higher power of the empire i don't know that's yeah, that's my maybe. theory and that's, that, that's probably it. I just don't think it's. Uh, they said he, and the first thing I thought was, "Oh, it's the emperor." But then I was like, oh, no. "No, no, why would the emperor no, talk think... to these guys? They're too low on the totem pole." Yeah, um, maybe Pershing does because he's the doctor. True, you know, like because he's got the cloner symbol on him. So you know, maybe. Um, yeah, but the client then also says, "Finish your business quickly," as I no longer can guarantee your safety. Right. That's so, true. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like there's some. There's a lot more going on here, and he um, conveniently disappears. Yeah, he does. I mean, the, the, the client, the client. Um, yes. yeah. And then, so then we get to the point where I said, he, it's very Sabine of him to kind of blow a hole a, in the wall there. Uh, and I thought this whole next scene here, all of it, when him taking out the stormtroopers was really cool. Yeah. He played Tom Clancy's ghost recon one too many exactly. times. That's what, I, that's what I happened there. Said it was kind of like a dark night, right? Very Batman yeah. uh, of him yeah. to be able to kind of run around the shadows like that. And when a little Sam Fisher right there, that was awesome. Yep. Um, and then b- barbecuing a, trooper there i wasn't expecting that so you know no, those critics it was, that was saying this isn't going to be dark enough well you just get a guy burned alive so you know just saying yeah i thought they did that great i think they did a great job with that even like the uh i like the way she and we didn't talk about her uh, deborah chow i i oh yeah i mean i thought she did a, a freaking amazing job on this show and so I, and i apologize i had that very first thing in my line in my notes and we skipped over it but i thought she did awesome especially with this scene in particular, because it was very action oriented. i like the way she used lighting. The shadows were the pacing, cool. Pacing, the pacing. Was good. There was moments in there. Like there's one where he takes out one stormtrooper and she's got the camera kind of at, at ground uh, level and you mm-hmm. can hear it happening, but you don't see it. Right. And the next thing you know, you see that stormtrooper drop and he walks off and then very nonchalantly just turns, his, you know, as he's walking away, pulls his blaster and just fires one right into the belly of that thing after it dropped. So all that's that, what you should do. And exactly. So and I mean, that's just up. like, it was just very, it was very different because it was, if you had any thoughts that maybe this was going to be a goody two shoe show. Well, then he nice the, the, the trooper there with too. the burning of the trooper, you know, kind yeah, of and he, and he, dispelled that. He stabs, he stabs a trooper too. He pulls him with the grappling and then stabs him in the back. So, yeah. The, uh, the scorpion yeah, I, move for Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, it seemed pretty dark to me. 
Yeah, I would agree. Not to mention the disintegrations. I mean, we can get into that, too. I mean, geez, (laughs) that whole ending was like, whoa, whoa. I wasn't expecting, I wasn't really expecting that, especially after them, you know, button heads and everything in their whole thing. I was like, "Ah, yeah, they're not good. You know, and then all of a sudden that happens. I'm like, oh, that was awesome. That was like the, go take me back to the Clone Wars um, with the Mandalorians and everything. That was awesome. And even Rebels. So it was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, no, I would agree. The, um. The uh, we got the inter- interrogated droid that was obviously a huge, you know, uh, w- I wouldn't even call it an Easter egg because we all know what that is. But I, the one question I have here is because, you know, he says, please don't hurt him. It's just a child. He turns away. Next thing you know, he's gone. Very Batman again. Right. Didn't even yep. see him leave or, or all that. But I think the question is, do you think they got an extraction or no. do you think he was ready to be extracted and it never occurred? I think it was about to happen. OK, no, that's fair. I mean, I, I think that's why the interrogator droid was there. It took a long time to do that extraction, though. So Yeah. Well, they had to, like, but, knock whatever. him out or something. I don't know what that thing is that was above his chest there that was kind of, I don't know what that was, but it was yeah. interesting. Yeah. I, I, it, to me, it looked like it was something just to hold him down and monitor his, you know, vitals to make sure that he was alive while they were doing it. I don't know. Yeah, but, maybe. Uh, but then we get this whole, you know, when he, once he, and then we kind of jumped around a little bit, but once he picks him up um, and then he starts walking around to it. We get this, and I'm. This is another thing that I was really all gushing over on social media today, and that was this this trope of baby and the badass. And I really, we talked about doing this, and and you and I were talking about this. Was it uh, last week when we were trying to come up with a show uh, show idea? I said, hey, why don't we do the show idea where we talk about this baby and the badass trope and provide some examples of that. <laughs> And uh, we decided not to go that route because it was going to take too long and we had to do some research and watch a couple of different things here and there. But nonetheless, the one I just want to point out that, uh, one, we, we were going to do this. Uh, and two, <laughs> that trope, actually, if you go look at it, that trope actually specifically says at some point the badass picks the baby up in his arm, his or her arm, and is, you know, fending off the bad guys at the same time that he's holding the baby, right? So in one hand, he's got the baby and the other hand, he's shooting usually or he or she's shooting the bad guys. And man, sure enough, we got that in this moment where he's got the baby cradled in one arm and he's just going on a tirade, killing these stormtroopers left and right. So I had posted the, there was a uh, hard boiled was one from 1992. Um, Torchwood was another one. And then obviously the, uh, the man, all movies, but- no one has ever watched, but Albert, no, no, that's not true. Yeah. Go, we got plenty true. of people no, yeah. that are, Liking this yeah. on social media, so yeah, nah, they just they they just being nice. <laughs> no, <laughs> maybe they I'm are. Like it. Maybe who knows? But, but it was it was exciting to see it. I got really excited and and super you know giddy when I saw that happening. So I was like, I knew this was gonna happen. But anyways, <laughs> um, whistling birds. We got to see them. We've already talked about them. Uh, and let's just jump to the very end because I know we're getting long here. But uh, we get to Mando finally getting out there. All the the uh, bounty hunters are kind of, you know, descending on him. They've kind of pretty much got him cornered or, or surrounded, I should say. And uh, we get, you know, the uh, <laughs> we get grief saying because I'm your only hope, which I thought was funny because it just reminded me of, you know, Obi Wan Kenobi being thinking or yes, he was the only hope at that point, and it turned out to be Luke Skywalker. It was just weird that they were funny, I guess, or coincidental that he used hope um, to kind of describe himself, given we what happened in in uh, Episode Four there. But um, mm-hmm. that last battle where there, I was completely taken off guard. I was not expecting, and maybe I was just too gr- engrossed in what was going on. Um, well, I thought we were going to get the lone gunfighter trope type thing. Where he's just taking the, out everybody on his own. Yeah, 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 exactly. I thought that's where we were going. Yep. Um, and, that, and I figured, and well, actually what I was thinking when he was look, looking at Baby Yoda, I was like, all right, so this is where the U-Wing person kind of comes in. Like that, maybe that was the payoff there. And that didn't happen, obviously, because then mm-hmm. we got the, you know, the 4th of July happened. Yeah. Uh, which was awesome. I was, like I said, I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting kind of something different, which is why I love this show is because, yes, it's kind of predictable. And you kind of know where you're going, but then there's like a left turn and, and then a great surprise right. and you feel great about everything. But anyway. Yeah, I, I thought it was great. Um. I, I, in my notes, I have, it says that, uh, it was like watching an episode of the Clone Wars, but in, yeah, in, in live action, I, I mean, yes. it was very similar, uh, but I just, you know, live action stuff. And, um, 
the uh, the one of the lines in there uh, we've talked about this, but you know where he says going we're going to have to relocate the covert at that point, and then he just responds back, "This is the way." So these guys made a decision to come out of hiding and protect the Mandalorian. I just thought this was interesting, given that where the it kind of it kind of speaks to the state of the Mandalorians because if you think mm-hmm. about where they were in the Clone Wars and to some extent in Rebels. They weren't always, you know, I got your back, you got my back, right? No. The, the Empire, I mean. No, they were well, very clan-oriented. Exactly. They were always so. fighting and killing each other, and then the Empire came in, and that just complicated things because some of them were siding with the Empire, others were not. So you almost had like three factions or three primary factions that were going against one another. And here you have a, you have one Mandalorian who has gone rogue um, against the his, his uh, business or – uh, his profession as a bounty hunter. And yet that was enough that the Mandalorians recognize that it is a kind of one for all, all for one type situation with them now, given how few of them there are. And mm-hmm. they make a decision to side with this one, again, this one Mandalorian who's gone rogue, who they know is that's got to be super risky. And yet they do it. There's a nobility here, I guess, more than anything about the Mandalorians that I don't think we've ever really seen before, maybe within their homes, or their own houses, right? We've seen that. But as a well, group, I mentioned it, holistically, I, we'd have never seen that before. Well, I'd mentioned the the honor thing in in the Mando Monday. I said he's an honorable person. Like like he wouldn't take credit for the kill of the Mudhorn. He couldn't let the kid go off and get killed that way. It wasn't honorable. Uh, so his honor overcame his dishonor. I guess you could say. Like he just said, mm-hmm. no, no, this isn't right. So that's not a this bounty isn't worth it if I let the kid die who's an innocent so to speak you know what i mean yeah, like it's yeah. not it's not good like this armor isn't worth it if if the child dies you know because it's a child it's not like it was me and he was collecting the bounty on me and getting the best scar it was it was a child that had nothing granted it was a 50 year old baby but you know what i mean yeah so i think there's and, and i think there's honor among them uh as well especially now i mean there always was an honorable way for them to fight and to honor each, you know that whole thing um you know with like death watch and how they went about things and stuff. But now it's more personal on their level because they're a mishmash of clans now. So there's like, they're becoming one big clan now. So there's honor among them. I think I could be wrong. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. And I, 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 all that to say, I like that this is kind of a new chapter for the Mandalorians. And it's almost like he's leading by example. I think like to your point, I think his good deeds are kind of molding where the Mandalorians are going at this point, right? He's leading by example, um, and I think he's kind of changing. And and I may be seeing w- way too much into this, but it just feels like they're, you know, he's shaping them um, and and leading them. Even though he's really, again, I think it's going to be awesome if he really is truly not a Mandalorian. And it it's, it goes back to that whole thing about even with like Ray. Right? It doesn't matter where you came from; it's a matter about you know where you are, or where you're going. Um, mm-hmm. That anybody can be anyone, depending on you know what 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 you want to do and if you're good of heart and all that. So I think that's the underlining story here. But the last thing I have for you before we go here is in, and I mentioned this earlier, uh, or tease it earlier, but this show, um, I think we were coming in thinking, okay, we're going to get a gunslinger movie. He's a bounty hunter. It's going to be a, a bounty of the week kind of thing, right? I mean, I'm not saying these are all, these were all prescribed for us, but these are just things that we heard. And here we are in chapter three, and I don't know that you can make an argument that he's that he's actually a bounty hunter anymore. He may be. He's probably not a bounty hunter for that guild, right? Oh, he's um, a mercenary. He's a mercenary basically. now. Yeah. But I, yeah, maybe. I don't know. It's like, who's he working for now at this point? How is he going to find work? Well, I think, see, here's the thing. I had mentioned this on the show that, that grief is going to forgive him because he shot him where his best car was. Like the Mando knew where he hit it. So he shot him there. So. All he was doing was just getting away. He didn't want to kill grief, grief. So I think, and of course they do meet up again because he lands his ship we've seen in the promo and all the others are right there with him. So I, th- I think he'll be back. Maybe mm. <laughs> we'll see. I'll see how that plays out. Um, maybe he's going to kill grief. I don't know. Um, but he's st- obviously still going to work. He's going to help out a young bounty hunter, right? From the descriptions. And uh, he's also going to join up with a bunch of people for a mission. So, It'll be interesting. I think the guild will almost forgive him, maybe, because this is kind of what happens. They're bounty hunting. It's complicated, right? So that'll be interesting. We'll mm. see. 
Yeah, I think uh, I agree with all that. I would say, I will say that I think he is going, I think the premise of this show going forward is, is two, and you're not going to like to hear this. No. One, I like that this is becoming a parenting show. Yeah. So, sorry, Ugh. I do. It's not, it's really not. Yeah, really. maybe. Yeah, no, maybe. It's, it's, it's not. It, there are parenting moments, and that pulls at your heartstring, but that, that's not what's happening. Because I can tell you, after episode four, when he drops the kid off at the village, I, I don't think we're going to see the nice Mandalorian. I don't think he drops the kid off at the village. I think he does. Because, if you, one, here's the thing. Baby Yoda yes. yep. is just as big as the Mandalorian, agree? Yeah. As a character. Yeah. So why would you, why would you remove because that character? It, it, the minute you do that, because the minute you do that, I think it, I think you're you're changing the. Fir, I mean, you're you're really kind of um, you're resetting at that point, and I don't think they're they're going to do that three four episodes into the show. I think they will. All they right, got to we'll get see. rid of the kid. You got to get rid of the kid. So here's here's why like, I don't think they would get rid of the kid. He's not safe. Why? There is everybody's well, got a father. The village. Thing, right? Everybody's got a father. From... Remember. Why would he yeah. leave the kid? I think if the Mandalorian is that protective of Baby Yoda. The safest thing is for him to be to be under his watch at all times. Now, maybe he doesn't he he has him and he keeps him on the ship or he finds other ways every time they're doing something, but I think you've got all these these people that want this bounty. You've got the the Imperial forces that are after him for whatever reason we don't know yet. They're out you've got a lot of people that are after this baby. He's already made the decision, and that's why he struggled with it for so long on that ship, that he was going to protect it. I don't think he's going to just go ahead and drop it off with somebody and say, here, you watch this thing now. I think it's, I think it's, he's bestowed it upon himself to be the caretaker no. and the protector at this point going forward, no, no matter what happens. No, no, not happening. All right. It's not happening. We'll it's going to dump the kid off, and then we're going to move on. That's the way it's going to be. Tell All me. right. We'll see. We shall. Who will be right, Mike or Albert? <laughs> Tune in next week to uh, yes, yeah, of course, because I'll be here. <laughs> I I think people are gonna. I think there's gonna be a a lot of people disappointed too if he just drops the baby off and we never no, see. No, I it don't again. think so. No, because it's it's gonna be resolved in the sense that like, okay, this makes sense. He dropped it off at the village. He helped out the village. The village is safe and out of the you know whatever, and and then I'll be fine, and I'll be fine with it. Mm. Or the best, what I would love for them to do, it won't happen. But next episode, you show he shows up in the village and he doesn't even have baby baby Yoda at all, and everyone's <laughs> right. like, "Where the hell is he?" Right? No, Where and then he? they they never tell you what happened, right? right? Exactly, because that, be awesome. that would be if Mike Rondo was running things. That's what would happen, and you would all be killing me. <laughs> yep. You want to know? Tough. Uh, You're never going to find out. Exactly, mystery man. I like the mystery. <laughs> um, and then the other, so the other foreshadowing moment was. I got to get get me one of those, the jetpack thing. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah, we're going to see that happen. He right? said exactly, and the best part, when that first happened, and he says it after, like like a second goes by, the salute and everything, and I'm like, oh, he's got to get one. I said it. He said he's got to get one of those, and then he says it. So that was <laughs> perfect. It, I'm, yeah. like, I'm like, he's just saying what we all thought. Oh, yeah. So that absolutely. was cool. So you know at the end, like the season finale, he's going to get one or something Yeah, that like would that. be a good, yeah, I would agree. I was thinking the same thing. Like sometime, it, I got to want him to get it yet. Uh, but definitely season finale. I think that's a really good way for him to get a final reward or I don't know, whatever. And then season two, we can start seeing all the, the hilarity that ensues with him trying to fly that thing. Cause I, I mean, what do you, if, if they're so rare and he's never had one, there's gotta be a moment. I know we've already had one montage of him trying to ride the, uh, you just want montage. I do want be better montages. Than, no, no, montages, it's like very 80s. Man. Why not get yeah, more montage? Because, because the, they should just die in the eighties. And leave him there. Survivor? Just leave him yeah. Just leave it there. Just move on, Albert. Move All right. on. All right. <laughs> anyway. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Ah, uh, thank goodness. No, that was fun. <laughs> Sorry you had to listen to me again this week, but, uh, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oops. Let's, um... All right, so we'll... Oh, uh, shout outs. We got some shout outs, oh, right? We do have some shout outs. Who do we got? New yes. one, just, um... Patreon. We got, uh, what is it, T-Flu 44? Is it yes. T-Flu or T-Flu? T-Flu. T-flu. And then, Terrence. then we got J-Mac, of course. Uh, welcome to the Patreon club, everybody. Yes, um, thank you guys for and, your financial donations. It was very yes, awesome. Appreciate we it. Greatly appreciate it. And we will be getting a CAD soon once we get our 
schedules all lined up again. So, and I'm just, I'm not sure where we're going to go with that yet. But, well, I got uh, the okay today from um, oh, yeah. my boss to go ahead and do a Cantina radio show. From Grief? Grief, uh, Grief no. gave you the, uh, oh. That was you. Oh. Oh, it was me. Oh, yeah. So huh, there you go. Uh, I'm going to do a Cantina radio. So those of you who don't know what that is, um, it's too long. We're out of time. I'm not going to explain it, but that <laughs> will be on uh, Patreon for you. So if those of you who do know, maybe it's something you're looking forward to. So See you'll, you'll hear that soon. Good. Look forward to it. Uh, Discord, uh, Darth Nebulous, uh, Kalaru, OG Free, and Todd Blinkenship. Why? Who let this guy on? Like, who allowed Todd to even join mm-hmm. Discord? I thought we talked about he was not going to be mm-hmm. on Discord. Mm-hmm. Anyway, let's move um, along. And then I have one quick special shout out to Monami. Uh, it's Unikuna, I think. She lives in France. Yvonne de France. Huh. So huh. Uh, she listens to the show and just want to say hi because I didn't realize we had somebody that far out that was uh, that big of a listener. So Must be my last name. Must be drawing them in. Right. You know, Rondo. Yeah. From from the French side of things. Uh if I knew French, say that I would French. say Rondo. That's uh, all. Rondo. Yeah, it's not yeah, it's not that real big of a deal. <laughs> <laughs> I think anyway. But anyway, that's the case with, with that. So I wish I could speak French because I'd say something in French for her, but unfortunately I I don't know a lick of it. <laughs> Je peux parler français. Yeah, sure. I don't know if I said that right. I took yeah, French. You like probably didn't. See, years. and that's the reason why I'm not even going to attempt because I don't want to insult anyone with my. I'm horrible speaking English. Never mind. You yeah, know. right. You've got to lose Never grasp mind. on the English language. We can't yeah, throw exactly. another one at you. Exactly. We don't want to make things more complicated than they need to be. Yeah. But anyway. Well, on that, we'll uh, we'll end the show. We'll be back uh, next week with uh, more fun stuff. And who knows? Maybe you'll get Mike Rondo back another show if you're lucky enough. So, oh, let's hope not. We can only hope. Yeah. All right. Anything before we go? Nah. See you next show. <laughs> okay. We'll see you. Take care. You're still listening? Wow. That's amazing. Well, I'm here to give you the disclaimer. Normally, we do a big, long, drawn-out disclaimer thing saying what's what and who's what and all that other stuff, but I think you guys kind of know that Lucasfilm and Disney have uh, no affiliation with us at all, uh, and we have none with them. Uh, We talk about Star Wars, which is their property and all that other good, fun stuff, uh, but I think you can tell which is our stuff and which is their stuff. If you can't, well, then send a lawyer to send an email to me, and I'll be glad to chat with them. Other than that, you know what's what, so that's your disclaimer. 